Shalom, and welcome to the Jonah Hebrew course. If this is your first time, we're on lesson three, and you can get the other lessons, one and two, on YouTube. So uh, if you want to catch up, but we, we have barely begun, and we're still going over the fundamentals of the Hebrew language. Uh, let me explain, and you might be new, let me just explain the structure of the course in the, in the first part of the lesson. We go over the basics of Hebrew, uh, Aleph Bet, uh, vowels, some grammar, and then we go into the text of the book of Jonah. And from there, we continue learning the Hebrew language as we are studying the book of Jonah. So that's how this course works. And we welcome you. Um, we're going to go over, the first thing we're going to do today is go over the Aleph Bet again. Uh, but this is something that you should take, get, the, get a copy of it. We, uh, there, uh, in our book, in our workbook, you can get a copy of this online. It's called uh, the Jonah Copy Book, an Interlinear Hebrew Translation Workbook. So um, I don't know if you could see that. You could get that book, and right in the first few pages is the Aleph Bet and Nikud, some of the vowels, or all of the vowels, really, that we will be using, uh, and that, that is part of the Hebrew language. Let's see, what part of the book is this? Okay, here it is. So if you're at home and you have the workbook, study the Aleph Bet. I would encourage you to study the Aleph Bet Know that, and then we can go on to building words and with uh, letters, building words with vowels, and you begin to build the vocabulary and learn the Hebrew language. That's the way to operate. So, uh, uh, just a little story. I remember my first day, uh, I began learning he Hebrew in seminary, and the first day of class, the professor handed out the vocabulary to everyone, said, memorize the vocabulary, and tomorrow we're going to have a quiz on it. So that's the way we began, and that's a good thing to do. Uh, maybe it'll take you more than a day, but you can do it in a day. So memorize that. Um, I, I, I wanted to learn the language, so I came back the next day, took the quiz, got an A+. Plus, uh, that's what you need to do. Okay, so we are going to continue going over for a while. We're going to continue going over the Aleph Bet. And I have uh, my chart up here. And I'm going to be using my pointer to point to the letters. And you say the letters with me as I do this. Okay, first one, Aleph. Aleph. See it there. Aleph. Second, bet, bet, gimel, gimel has a g sound. Aleph is silent. Bet is like our b has a b sound. Gimel is like our g it has a g sound. Dalit has a d sound. D d hey has an H sound of our H, ha, vav, has a V sound, V, say vav, vav. Then we have a Zion, like a Z, Z, Z. And now we come to a letter that's uh, quite different maybe in sound for us in the English, uh, who are uh, speaking English. This is called a Chet. Chet, and you have to go back in your throat a bit for this to say ch, chet, chet. And then finally we have a tet, and it is a t sound, a t, tet. So that's the first column uh, above. Uh, go over that, study them, say the words, as I said, in your notebook. You know, you can go online and get charts of the Hebrew alphabet easily. Uh, and uh, many of these will show you how to sound it, or even better, something we've been doing in our, the class that meets, is that we go over the Aleph Bet song, and you could sing the song 
learn the the alphabet and you're on your way to learning the language. Okay, let's do the second column. Here we are. Over here we have a yod. A yod makes a y sound like a y. Kaf has a k sound. This is a final kaf. Notice how it comes around like the C or like a, you know, and then it just drops. Final cough. Some letters uh, in the Hebrew alphabet have a final form. When they're at the end of a word, they have a final fo form, and cough is one of them. And here's the final fo form. Next is lamet. Lamet makes a l sound. Mem. M, 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 a, uh, a M sound. If you're wondering what this is underneath, uh, it is the script, how to write in, in script or cursive. Uh, that's a little more advanced, but uh, we, we're not going to get to that. We're, we're just looking at the printed uh, letters right now. So, okay. Uh, and here we have a somic, a somic, and it makes a S. Oh, I'm sorry. No, uh, I'm wrong about that. It does look like the somic. I'm wrong. We have mem. Let me go back. Hang on. Don't get confused. Relax. You're okay. It takes time. Okay, this is a mem. M. And mem also has a final form. This here is a mem in the final form. It looks like a box. If you go over here to Somek, it kind of looks a little bit like it in this, uh, the way it's uh, written here. So I got, I, I, I got a little confused there. Okay, so now we're, that was the final mem. This next one is a nun, a nun, and it makes an, an N sound, nun. And um, we also have final nun. That line goes down below the line here. Don't confuse it with a vav. Kind of looks like a vav, but it's much longer. It is the final nun, n sound. When we uh, go into the text of, of the book of Jonah, we'll show you some of these letters as uh, some of these final forms in some of the words so you can get a look and get an idea of what we're talking about there. Okay, so now we come to the psalmic, which I confused before. This is an S sound, S, psalmic, psalmic. Okay, now we're on our final column. Down here, we have ayin. It, uh, it is the second silent letter. So, um, two silent letters, aleph, ayin, they do not make a sound in themselves. They only take the sound of the consonant that is written. And we're going to see the consonant, uh, not the consonant. They take a, uh, the sound of the vowel that's written under the consonant or beside the consonant or over. I'll explain that when we do some of the vowels. Okay, so here's ayin. Again, a silent letter. Ayin. Pay your p sound, your p sound. Pay, and pay also has a final form. Tzadi, tzadi. Now here's a different letter too that we're not used to in our language. It has a T-S sound, a tz, tz, tzadi, tzadi, okay. And tzadi has a final form, there it is. Akuf, this is our K or Q sound perhaps, a k. Kuf, resh, a resh, it is an R sound, r, resh, sheen, famous uh, letter, sheen, here, uh, we're going to talk about this, uh, it ha it, the sound can change in this, uh, depending on how we mark it, but this is the sh sound, you perhaps are familiar with the word El Shaddai, God Almighty, well Shaddai, begins with a shin. So uh, there's the letter shin. And final letter, taf. Taf has a t sound. So that is the aleph bit. 
Again, I'm encouraging you to take the time, memorize the uh, Aleph Bet, look up that song online, the Aleph Bet song. You'll know it in a, in a few days. If you give, give it a little time, you'll know it as well as your ABCs, uh, the, the English alphabet. And here is the Nikud. Nikud is the word for uh, the vowels or the system of vowels in Hebrew. It's a system of lines and dots that form the vowels in the Hebrew language. So in our last lesson, lesson two, we went over two vowels, the A ah sound and the O oh sound. So the patak and the kamats are two vowels that make an A ah sound and the holam and the holam vav are two vowels that make the O oh sound. And we did that in lesson two, so if you want to go back, take a look at lesson two or look in your workbook, uh, take a look at those vowels. We're going to do two other vowels today. The hyric yod, the hyric yod here, and we're going to do a vowel called sire. The hyric yud is a dot under the consonant, and here we have the consonant of uh, aleph. Doesn't make a sound, but we have this hyric yud, and with that it, it makes an e sound, e. So you would pronounce this as e. Remember, the consonant makes no sound, the aleph makes no sound, so this is E, and that's the hyric Yud, that dot underneath the consonant and that Yud uh, on the side of the consonant. Hyric Yud makes an E sound. Uh, we can also see the hyric just by itself underneath the consonant, that little dot right here, uh, and it also makes an E sound, E. Now, let me just try a le another letter to give you an idea. If I put the consonant bet here, now you have a bet, and that's a ba sound. I would see that and I would read ba. But if I put the hyric yud, Stronger, the hyric yud, I would pronounce that as b, because we have the b in the consonant and we have the hyric yud, which is an e sound, so we have b, b. Okay, same thing with um, uh, if if it appears just with the hyric underneath the consonant, same sound, b. And you'll, you'll see that when we go over the book of Jonah, we'll see that used in different ways. And I'll, I'll try to point that out. That here's a hyric yod, and he, here's how it sounds. Okay, so we have one other uh, vowel that we're going over today. Again, a part of the Nikud uh, system of vowels. This one is called Etsire, Etsire. And there it is. Uh, that's the best I could spell it in English. And I think that's the way it's usually spelled if we want to say tsire in English. Um, and here we have a bet again. And underneath, notice the tsire is written uh, with two dots. Two dots under the consonant forms the vowel. And tsire has an A sound. These two dots have an A sound. So this would be pronounced with the bet and the tsire, you have be, be. Okay? Um, is that clear? We'll say that again, tsire, two dots. So now you have a bet and a tsire, and together they would be pronounced be. Same thing if I, if I wrote, uh, go to the next letter, and let's say I wrote, um, 
a cough. Let's see, I wrote a cough. And I put two dots underneath. I would have K. K. Uh, if I put a G, let me just take that out. Or I'm sorry, not a G, but a gimel makes the sound of G. So we have a gimel, which is, uh, has the sound of a G, a G sound, with the tsire, and you'd have gay. That's the way we would pronounce that, gay. All right, so we're going to look at the next vowel here, which is called a segol. A segol. I'm looking for my pointer. Here it is. Right here, segol. And that makes an e eh sound. It is written with three dots just like that under the consonant. And it makes an e eh sound. So this would be be with the, the, the ba sound from the bet, ba, and the e eh sound from the vowel sigol. Uh, we have be, be. So sire, be. Sigo be, and those are part of the nikud and the that a e sound we need uh, in the vowel structure. Okay, so those are the two vowels that we're going to cover today. We're going to see those as we go into the text of Jonah. We're going to see these vowels and these letters forming words. And so this is uh, what this course is, is an inductive way of studying the Hebrew language. But we're doing it for the purpose of going deeper into the Word of God, into the uh, Hebrew text, uh, into the Bible stories, to learn more, to see if the language won't yield us some more meaning. And I believe it will. And the book of Jonah, I didn't pick arbitrarily. It is a powerful book for those of you who are Christians or who believe in Yeshua, Jesus, the, the Messiah of Israel, the Messiah of God. If you believe that you would know the book of Jonah and that many uh, Christian scholars have called the book of Jonah or referred to the book of Jonah as the gospel of the Old Testament. And because it speaks of God's love for all people and his redemption, his desire to see them uh, come to understanding of him, come to follow him, come to believe in him. And we're going to see that powerfully in this book. And so, uh, this is why we're studying. We're also learning the Hebrew language along the way, and it's a wonderful way to learn. Okay, now we have gone over our Aleph Beit. We have gone over a couple of vowels. We're going to look at the book of Jonah now, and uh, we're going to look uh, specifically at Jonah chapter 1, verse 3. But I'm going to read the first three verses for you. We've already covered, covered that in our lesson one and lesson two. So you could find those online. You can, um, you can find those on YouTube, uh, our Jonah channel. Also, Elim Congregation in uh, Fruit Cove, Florida is also carrying the lessons on their YouTube channel. So try to find those lessons if you wanna uh, see what we said about the first two verses of Jonah. So now I'm going to read from the workbook I told you about. Again, you could get that uh, online, or you can uh, contact us here at the JonahMission.org, and uh, we will arrange to have one sent to you, okay? All right, so I am going to read that, those first three verses. I wish I could find a way, and I eventually it will, to, to post all those verses, the whole text on the board for you so that I could read it. But... Right now I'm reading out of the uh, workbook, page six, and it starts right at the top right-hand corner. We're gonna read from right to left. This is Hebrew. 
And <clears throat> here we go. Vayehi dvar Adonai Eliona ven amitai lemor. Kum lek el ninive ha ir hagadola ukra aleha ki aleta raatam lifanai. Vayakam yona livroak tarshisha mlifne Adonai. Vayered yafo vayimsa onia baa. Tarshish. So that is as far as uh, we are going to be going today in that last part uh, that um, I read, which is verse 3. We're going to look at very closely now. We're going to uh, learn something about the Hebrew language and we're going to learn, hopefully really learn, about the book of Jonah and the word of God that comes to us through this powerful, awesome book of God's love and mercy, and we're going to see also the sinfulness of God's people and really others in the world. Okay, so let's take a look. So here we are up here, and uh, I'll use my, my pointer. So hopefully you're seeing that. Uh, verse 3, and it starts with a vav, vaya. Come is the first word, vaya come, and it comes from the verb come, which means to rise up. Uh, and um, I'm just going to adjust my mic a, a bit because I want to make sure that uh, you're hearing me. Okay, so it comes from the verb come, which means to get up, to rise up. Um, and we already are. Uh, saw in the previous verse that the Lord says to Jonah, Kum, get up, go to Nineveh. And Jonah does get up, via come, and he rose up, it says. Uh, and if you want to look cl more closely at the uh, letters here and the vowels, Vav, Yod, Kuf, final Mem, see that final Mem? And, and then we see our... Uh, are all vowels underneath, the patak and the kamats. So we have vai, vai ya kam. And he rose up, and then of course uh, the name comes after it in the, in the uh, way that Hebrew is structured, uh, in the syntax, the way the sentence is structured. Vai ya kam yona. And this is uh, Jonah's name, yona, which we've already had in previous verses. So it's Yod, and here uh, we just went over that, uh, that vowel not too long ago, the Holom Vav. So we have Yod, Yod, Holom Vav, Nun, He, and that's the name of Jonah. So you have Vayakam Yona, and uh, here we have an infinitive of the verb to come or to go, sometimes it's translated. Um, Leave roak uh, to uh, actually no. This is not the verb to come. I'm sorry. This is the wor verb to flee, uh, and that's a little different. So leave roak again. Lamed hyrik underneath. We just covered that today. Hyrik vav. So you have leave. Remember the hyrik makes an e sound. Leave ro, ro resh uh, holem. Above the letter, leave ro, and then you have the patak chet, so that's going to give you an ach. Leave roach, to flee. Uh, Tarshisha, and this is of course the city of Tarshish. It's important in studying the scriptures to know something about the context uh, of, of the book, uh, to know something about the background of the book. Where is Jonah when he hears this? Where is he going? Where is Tarshish? What is Tarshish? Tarshish is believed to be a country uh, as far away from Israel as, as you could travel by boat. It's really, to them, it was the end of the world. It's believed it's modern day Spain. That's not definite, but that's what many scholars believe that he was going to cross, Jonah was crossing the Mediterranean to get as far away from Israel as he could. 
We do know that most of the treasures of the king uh, of Israel, King Solomon, came from Tarshish. So um, Tarshish, then notice it says Tarshish, uh, that hay on the end of Tarshish is to tell us that Jonah is going toward that place. All right, so, Vayakam Yonah Livroak Tashisha. And then we have over here, I hope you could see that, Milifne, Milifne. The word Lifne means before, and here the, the sense of it is before God, in His presence, in his pre before His presence. But it says Melifne, which means from his presence. That mem at the beginning of the word tells us it means from the presence of the Lord. Milifne, and then we have uh, the sacred name of God, yod He vav uh, which is called in, uh, when you're studying theology, it's often referred to as the tetragrammaton, or the four letters that make up God's word, uh, God's name. Uh, and there are, no, uh, there are no vowels, so we don't know exactly how to say it. Some people have said Jehovah. I have to say categorically Jehovah is wrong. Uh, there is no J sound in, the, in classical Hebrew. Uh, there is a, a Yod. It begins with a Yod, so it's Yah. It might be Yahova. It might be Yahweh. We don't know. And perhaps that's a good reason not to try to say it, but we often, um, instead of trying to say the name of God, the sacred name, we say Adonai or Hashem, which means the name, or Adonai, which means the Lord, and when it's, uh, uh, or my Lord, but when it's translated into English, it's translated as Lord. This is Lord, I know in in many versions, this Lord is written in all capitals, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. This means that the sacred name was used. Okay, we have it right here. Melifne uh, Adonai. So he leaves the presence of the Lord. Now, I hope you can uh, see that. I know these are, words are a little close together, but I want to tell you this. If you think these words are close together, you should read these in the Torah or in the Tanakh. Uh, they are very close in the Tanakh, and you really have to know what you're, what you're reading. You really have to know the language to read out of the Torah correctly. So you have Vayakam, Yona, Livroak, Tashisha, Milifne, Adonai, sacred name. So now we're here, and um, so what happens? He flees from the presence of the Lord, and it says, Vayered, 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 uh, Yafo. Uh, it's from the verb Yerad, which means to go down. In fact, if you listen to the uh, word Jordan or Yardain, uh, in Hebrew, the Yardain, uh, it, it's really saying it's, it's, it goes down. It really describes the river. Jordan is the river that goes down from north to south in Israel, out of the Sea of Galilee, down into the Dead Sea, uh, the Yardane. So this is the verb uh, Yerad, and here in this uh, conjugation, it's Vayered, Vayered. Vayered Yafo, he went down to Joppa. Uh, Joppa. Joppa is an ancient port. Again, we need to know some background of the book. It's an ancient port. In fact, uh, historians say it, it is the most ancient uh, port in history. As far as recorded history, uh, the port of Joppa. Uh, so uh, that's where he goes, and that's where you would go to find a large ship taking you in a long distance. There were ships of all kinds in Joppa. Uh, and uh, it was a merchant ship uh, that, that he finally boards, we're going to see, uh, filled with cargo. So a large ship, he goes down to Joppa, it says, Vayered Yafo, 
And so you see Yafo there, a Yud, a Kamatz, so that's going to give us a Ya. The Yud is Ya. And then you have a Kamatz, A. So you have Ya. You have um, a Pe, which is softened here. So it's pronounced as a F, like an F. Ya, F, Ya, F. And then you have the Holem Vab, which is O. So it's Yafo. And that's Hebrew for Jaffa. So now uh, we have another uh, and here, Vav, uh, Patak, Va, and Vayinsa from the Hebrew verb Matzah, which means to find, and Vayimsa, Vav, Yod, you have the Vai there, and the E, Vayi, there's the Hyrick, it's going to give us an E sound, Mem, so Vayim, Tzadi, Tsa, and there's the uh, Kamatz, so it's Tsa, and that's it, Vayim Tsa, and that's it. Remember, um, the Aleph is silent, Vayim Tsa, and he found, and he found, Onia, Onia, a boat, he found a boat, Vayim Tsa, Onia, Ba'a, Tarshish, Ba'a here, um, just take a, a minute for this. There's your word for boat. Now, come on. You can learn that vocabulary word, boat. Onia, it's still used today in modern Hebrew. Onia, boat. Uh, so, uh, there's a good vocabulary word. Um, and a number of these are uh, e pretty easy to to remember. So study your book, study your vocabulary, build your vocabulary. Okay, so now we have Ba'a, and um, it's the Hebrew verb Ba, which really means to come, and maybe it could literally be translated, and he found a boat uh, to come to Tarshish. Uh, but uh, really in English, it would be translated here as go to Tarshish. But it is the uh, Hebrew word for come. And it has the hay on the end because uh, boat is feminine, uh, and it's referring to the boat, ba'a, uh, Tarshish. So he finds a boat to go to Tarshish. All right, so now we want to take a little time in our study to say, okay, what's this telling us? What are we finding out here about the prophet? Well, God speaks to the Lord, God speaks to Jonah, and he, he commands him really, Kum, Leik, get up, go to Nineveh, cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me, their time of judgment has come. And this is uh, uh, really, I think, to understand this is, it sounds like he's sending Jonah to give the people of Nineveh one final warning before the judgment comes. We're going to find Jonah is going to say the judgment will come in 40 days. That's a really short time. Uh, one final warm to cry against the city. But we find that Jonah rises up, uh, which the Lord said, rise up, but he goes in the almost opposite direction. He goes due west instead of northeast to go to Nineveh. He goes actually south and west. Or he might have gone due west. Or where did he where did he leave from? Some people think he. Uh, some people, some scholars think he left well from his hometown, from Israel, his hometown in the Galil, actually in the Galilee, uh, where he lived very close to Nazareth, uh, the name of his town where he lived. But I believe that he got the vision in the temple in Jerusalem because it says that he flees from the presence of the Lord. And in the temple is where they believe the presence of the Lord. Anyway, the prophet goes west to Joppa to find a ship. He clearly disobeys the command, the direct command of God. And this is a prophet. 
What do we make of this? Well, we know in, uh, that Nineveh and the people of Nineveh were uh, a very military uh, nation, country, people. They were cruel, cruel uh, in their treatment of other peoples, in their conquering of other peoples. They were enemies of Israel and threatened them all the time. And Jonah, no doubt, wanted them to be judged did not want to help them uh, in any way, did not want to cry, didn't want to give them a chance. And so he tries to flee from the presence of the Lord, goes in the opposite direction, and finds a ship going as far as he possibly can. I mean, once you hit, uh, once you hit Tarshish, you hit the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, no one traveled uh, very far in that direction at that time. So, we have a disobedient prophet. Before we, before we judge the prophet, we really should look at ourselves here. The prophet is probably considered the most holy person in the land of Israel. Not that Jonah was necessarily, but the, uh, the position of the prophet a very holy person. To have him directly disobey God is telling us not only something uh, about him, but about the people as well. Um, before we judge Jonah, how faithful are we in following the command of God, especially about reaching those who are lost, as terrible as they might be? You see, we're going to learn here more and more, and we can begin to see it here. Why does uh, the Lord God want Nineveh to get another warning? Because if we look at the whole of Scripture, we would find out that God has compassion on all of his creation. God loves all of his creation. He doesn't want people to perish. He doesn't want them to die. But their sins their hatred, their cruelty, and all the sins you can name corrupt and destroy them to the point at which God must bring a judgment. Eventually, it comes to court and justice is done. But God wants to extend compassion and forgiveness. So the prophet's message is to repent, come back, believe in God, turn from your sins, don't attack Israel, believe God, don't attack anyone. Trust in God and ask for forgiveness for your sins and this judgment will not come upon you. We have to ask ourselves how faithful we are in carrying God's message to the lost. And are there nations or peoples or ethnic groups that we secretly hate or despise or wish would be judged? And so we're not going to them, we're not praying for them, we're not seeking their salvation. So there's a, there's a powerful message, and that message we'll, we'll keep seeing. Of course, the, we're going to find out the prophet, neither can we run away from this calling. God will pursue us. But as we close here in this lesson uh, three, I believe, yes, lesson three, I don't want to make the same mistake in my life that Jonah has made. I want to hear what the Lord is saying. And the Lord is speaking to all of us who believe in him that we make an appeal to the lost. I thank the Lord that he delivered me out of my sinful life many years ago. Uh, I was down and out, a hippie. Um, and I had many sins against God. I thought I was right. I thought I was right, and I would, you know, criticize everyone else in the world. But really, I was sinful, and I was dying. And the Lord saved me. And now, as His messenger today, I want to extend that to anyone who's listening, who is lost from God. You don't want to be an enemy of God. You don't want to be lost. You don't want to perish. God is extending you an invitation to turn away from your sin, believe in him, ask him for forgiveness and the eternal life he gives. In the New Testament writings, 
the, the Apostle Yochanan John says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever should believe in him, Yeshua, Jesus, will have eternal, will not perish and have eternal life. That invitation is for you today. Would you receive that and, and receive the life that the Lord wants for you and your family? If you want to know in, more information about this, you could contact, uh, contact us at the jonahmission.org. That's our mission, to reach the remaining people in the world with the love of God. So contact us there. We'll send you more information. Until then, may the Lord God bless you, and we wish you from the Jonah Mission, Shalom.